Let's take a moment to go over the features of linuxacademy.com so that you can get the most out of this course. I'm going to start here on the syllabus page. Here you'll find all the lessons that are part of this course, and they're laid out in a manner that's pretty much the same as are laid out in the objective document that Microsoft puts out for exam 70-534. In other words, these are the domains, each one of these section headings is a domain that Microsoft wants you to focus on, such as design and application storage and data access strategy. And then within each of these domains, there are lessons surrounding all the information that Microsoft says you should learn, such as table storage here, as you can see, and I've got a demo about table storage, and then SQL database, and then document DB, and then there's a demo about document DB. In other words, this course is laid out in a way so that it covers all the information that you need to know for exam 70-534 within the domains as they're described by Microsoft and the lessons therein are laid out in a way that makes sense. Now, you don't have to take the course in this order. If you already know a lot about ARM networking, for example, you can just pick the lessons where you're weaker or you can take them in an order that makes more sense to you. You don't have to do them this way. Next, let's review the download section. When I click on that button, you can see there's a bunch of different files that can be downloaded here. In this particular course, I make extensive use of case studies with the quizzes. These are documents that explain a set of business objectives and technical requirements for everything you need to do. And so you'll need to download those files in order to actually take the quizzes, such as this one right here for securing case resources. And I do that just by clicking on this link right here. There's also a bunch of slide decks in here and other materials that'll help you follow along in the course. This course, like most, has note cards. To get to them, I come over here to the menu and I choose note cards. When I do that, you can see there are a number of decks that are already existing in this course. You can see that I've got a bunch of decks that I've made for you already. So these decks that I've made for you are by objective domain. In other words, there's a domain that says design advanced applications in the exam 70-534 description. So I've made a deck for you that covers all the different courses that are part of that domain. No cards are basically flashcards. You can see I've got a question on the front side of the card right here. Web jobs are typically used for these purposes. When I hover over this card, I can see the answers. Maintenance tasks, long running tasks, and background tasks. Because I created this card, I can edit it by clicking the edit icon right here. I'll close this. I can also create a new card by clicking on add card right here, entering a question and an answer. If I decide I don't actually want to create the card, I can click on, click on delete card or just close it right here. And I can delete an existing card such as this one right here by choosing its edit icon and then choosing delete card, which I won't actually do. A really nice feature of note cards is that you can clone other people's cards and use them in your own decks. Let me show you how that works. I've come over here to the AWS Essentials course because it has a more rich selection of user note card decks from which I can select. So when I scroll down a little bit, you can see I've got a list of popular decks. And the choice that I have here is most forked. And I can see this is the instructor deck right here. And then beneath it are additional student decks. And I can take a look at those right here. So let me go ahead and take a look at this deck that was made by Sergi. When I click on that, I can see there's a single card that says Project Omega link with a link. So I could go ahead and clone that if I wanted by clicking here on fork. That'll automatically add this card to my own deck for the AWS Essential course. Let me close that window. I can do the same thing here with Jason's deck. When I view his deck, I see he's got 12 cards and I've got one that's about the standard storage class. I've got another that's basically knuckles. Let's say I don't know that much about route tables. I could clone this card just by clicking on fork note card and then save note card. Now that's been saved to my deck for this particular course. I'll close this. I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top. I'm going to click on my username and choose note cards. When I do that, I can see I've got an AWS Essentials deck and you can see the two cards that I cloned or forked. Back here in the exam 70-534 prep course, I want to show you how to create a course schedule. Everybody tends to get pretty busy and it can be hard to find the time to actually come in and conduct your linuxacademy.com studies alongside all the other pressures you have in life. 
a course schedule is basically here to try to help you manage your time a little bit better and keep to that commitment of self-improvement. Let's take a look. So to create a course schedule for this particular course, I'm just going to go ahead and click on create a course schedule right here. You can see I could also create a course schedule by clicking on this button right down here. But I'll instead, I'll just go up here and click this one. The first thing that happens is I'm asked, what is my time zone? And this is important because the course schedule will send you email reminders in order to remind you that it's time to study based on the schedule that you provide. In my case, this is the right time zone, six hours behind GMT, and I can pick a start date as well. In this case, I'm going to say I actually want to start this course on the 26th of February. I click Next. Now I'm asked to assign the hours that I'm available to actually participate in this course on a weekly basis. In this case, I'm going to say I don't actually have any time on Sunday, but I do have two hours on a Tuesday, an hour on Wednesday, and a couple hours on Friday that I can devote to this course. I'll click on Next. You can see that now the LinuxAcademy.com's course scheduler has calculated out for me how long it's going to take to complete this course. You can see that the total course time I need to devote is 18 hours, 34 minutes, and 57 seconds based on the length of the videos and the quizzes that are available. You can see that I'm saying I have five hours of time every week to devote to this course. And then I'm going to start on February 26th. So the scheduler has calculated that based on the time I can commit, I'll be done with this course in April 4th, 2017, and that it's going to take me five weeks to complete the course. You can also see here on the right the dates upon which I should take each individual lesson. Let me scroll back up to the top so we can continue. When I click on the next button here, you can see I can set myself reminders based on day. So I could, for example, say on Tuesday, I want you to remind me at 7 p.m. to come and take my course. So I'm going to click on Next. And you see I can give this schedule a name. I'll just leave it at that. Click on Complete. And I can go ahead now and click on all my course schedules. When I do that, I see the course schedule right here. And when I click here, I'll be taken back to the course page. And filled in for me will be due dates for every single lesson and quiz that are part of this course. Now I'd like to take a moment to talk about the community. The great strength of LinuxAcademy.com are students just like you. All of you come from different backgrounds and have different knowledge sets, and your willingness to share that information with each other, help each other, and encourage each other is what helps our students succeed. And fortunately, you can access students who are taking this very same course right here from the course page. To do that, I click on Community, and I have three options here. Interact with students, Instructor Site Support, and Study Groups. I'm going to start with study groups. Study groups are basically mini communities of students who are also taking this course. If you're part of a team account, you probably have a study group that's devoted to your other team members. And if you're an individual student, you can either create a study group and invite your friends or join an open study group or ask to be invited to another student's study group. Let's go ahead and create a study group. To do that, I'm going to click on this button. You can see I'm asked to give it a name. I'll call this exam. 70-534 exam. And you can see that that's the course that I want to assign it to. And I have several options. One is whether or not this is an open group. Open groups, anyone can join. I'll go ahead and create an open group. Then I'm also asked, well, can members invite users to join this group rather than just me? If I click that box, then yes, anybody who's a member of this study group can directly invite other students to join this study group. That would be especially relevant if I was running a closed group. If I run a closed group, by default, I'm the only person who can invite students to join this study group. But if I check this box, then anybody who's a member of this group can invite someone to join it. It also helps with open groups to check that box because it makes it easier for members to point students to where they need to go to become part of the group. Finally, I've got this box that says show my online status. If I check this, when I'm working here on linuxacademy.com in this study group, other members will be able to see if I'm currently on the site. Finally, I've got this option to introduce myself. This is basically a greeting that will be part of the group anytime somebody joins it. And I'll say, welcome to 
this study group. When I click on save, my study group is created. Now let's go ahead and poke around in it. When I click on view, you can see I've got right here a link right here that I click on it. There's the message that I actually entered. And you can also see that I'm the only group member right here. If I wanted to, I can click here and search for new members or add additional invitation right here. So I could search, for example, for Stephen Smith. I can click him right here, invite him to join this study group, and send him an invite message. When I click on when I click on close, that invitation will be sent. Back here in community, if I choose interact with students, you can see that I get a box that comes up that allows me to post directly to the community. In this case, this post will be flagged with a title that indicates that I posted this message to the community directly from the course. But let's suppose I have a question about CDNs. Here I could type in something like when do you use CDNs. And I might put into a topic in something like, I'm confused by when a CDN makes sense. Should I use them for every website or just some? And when? Now, I can choose a topic for this particular post. I can say it's either course-related or an achievement. I'll leave this as course-related. And now I can click on Share. When I do that, my message is posted directly to the community at large. And you can see right here, my post is also shown on the course page. Now, I can also scroll back up, click here on the Community button, choose Interact with Students, And you can see my post is also here in the community at large. If you haven't done it so yet, I really strongly encourage you to come here into the community as often as you can and not only ask questions, but answer questions and encourage other students. You can see right here we have several students who are announcing their passes on various exams, and we want to recognize those achievements when we can both yours and theirs. And other students also have questions where you could help them solve problems, such as this question about a stack SH error, and this additional questions about temp and run. These are the kinds of questions you'll find in the community. If you know how to answer, feel free to share it. And if you have a question, feel free to ask it. Again, the strength of linuxacademy.com is students just like you helping and encouraging each other. You'll also see here on the right-hand side, sticky posts. These are announcements and information we think it's important for you to be have right at your fingertips. For example, our course roadmaps, where we announce what courses are upcoming and when you can expect to see them. And new course announcements, such as the announcement for this course. And also, service changes, such as our web console for AWS-related terminals. Finally, let's discuss how you go about getting support both with your account and billing issues and with course materials or questions you want to ask the instructor. To do that, I'm going to come over here to the Community button. When I click on that, I choose Instructor Site Support. You can see I have four different options. First is Search the Community. Using this feature, you can actually look to see whether or not the question you have has been answered previously, either by other students or by the instructor in the community itself. Or you may have spotted a problem with the course something you don't quite understand or something you need additional clarification on. To do that, you would choose, I need some help with the course material. And then you brought right over here to the community to ask your question. Back here in the support dialog, you see you can also ask account, billing, or technical issue questions. Things such as something isn't working in your web browser, or you need help figuring out the bill for your account. Or you may have a question that you want to pose privately to the instructor because it's just not something you feel comfortable asking in the community. To do that, I select this item. And you can see I'm asked to choose what type of issue it is. I'll choose private question to the instructor. 
and then you provide whatever information it is you're looking for. In this case, let's say it's, I can't understand what you're saying in the lesson on network security. Is the word ports or portals when you talk about forwarding? And then I would go ahead and click submit ticket. That's how you would go about putting in a ticket. I'll just close this. Finally, if I look at the community one more time for instructor site support, you see I've got the option for feedback. This is just general feedback about the site or to ask for a particular feature. For example, if you had a concern about the way something works on the website or you wanted them to add something such as downloadable videos or the like, this is where you would go ahead and make that suggestion. That's our review of linuxacademy.com features. If you have questions, feel free to ask in the community or to submit a ticket. Now let's get on with the course.